in the promises of God where you said to be still and continue to know that I am God and that I will be exalted in the earth and that I will be exalted in the land. Father, we pray that you would help us in our space to remember, oh God, that you said in your word that if we had faith as a mustard seed, so Lord, we can be those mustard seed mm. centers yes, yes. that will help My those God. folks all right. around the world, right. folks right. here right. in this community, even, oh God, in a local sense, yes. as we drove through and we saw the yes. folks yes. that were standing with posters and signs mm -hmm. about their own country and yes. thinking yes. and praying and concerned about their loved ones. Right. Father, yes. we have been graced. Yes, yes. But now, oh God, we yes. need to step up to the yes, plate yes. and remember and that, Lord, Lord, you have called us yes, to be light in a dark world. Yes. So, Father, we <laughs> thank you for where we are, yes. but we pray, oh God, for wisdom for you to, to, to guide us where we need thank to be. You, yes. So, Father, we pray that you will bless this worship experience and we pray for those that are Thank under the sound of our voice and we pray for those yes, that are in the yes. sanctuary and we pray for those Thank that may God. be on the cyber uh, 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 systems and Father we just pray that by your spirit you will help us to remember that you are our God Yes, and that regardless of what the politicians and what, regardless of what the demagogues Yes. Try to present to a world that yes. is shaking. We need to remember wow. that the Almighty wow. still sits yes. high. Yes. And that as you yes. said in your word, the earth is still the Lord yes. and the fullness thereof. Yes. So yes. God, help us even now. Though we know that these things are, are pressing in our spirits, help us to maintain our focus on you. So that God, we won't be distracted and that we can still hear from you and get instructions from you and get guidance from you and get directions from you so that that which we receive, we can share. 
in the matchless name of Jesus. Would you bless us now, we pray. In Jesus' name. Oh, I said thank you, Lord. Thank, thank you, Lord. And amen. Amen. There's so much, saints, that's going on in our world. And you and I are not in a position where we need to close our eyes. Uh, I had a very interesting, you know, how you start doing a little purging and cleaning and different things like that. And I recall even on yesterday, I put my hands on my old uh, um, draft cards. Amen. Amen. And I think about the fact that it was during the time that I was in military training down at uh, Tuskegee. And uh, uh, it was also draft time. And what happened is, it was during my time there that God stopped the war. Do you realize how many of our people have gone to war on foreign soils? Can you imagine uh, all the, the impact that it has had? And look at some of our veterans as they come back and some are still traumatized by so many of those different things. And can you just about imagine if it were you and I and these bombs were coming all over here and folks are trying to find a way out. Amen? Amen. We need to be praying. Amen. We, we don't need to get comfortable and complacent because, you know, that ain't my problem. It ain't, it ain't hit my house. Amen? Amen. 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 So we need, to, we need to be mindful of those things. Just the other day, there was a storm and the storm knocked the power out of some folks' homes and they called and asked is your power on? And I said, yeah, it's still on. And 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 their their hearts were open because they needed to come and to receive some of the resources that God had still left us. You and I, I need you to hear what I'm saying. You and I are the resources that God has left on planet Earth, even to pray intercessory for those folks that are going through. Oh God, 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 God. Two fifty-seven, if you please. Mm -hmm. Standing on the promises. Mm -hmm. Sing it like you mean business. Mm -hmm. yeah. Recently, I was sharing with someone, and even at the service I went to a few weeks ago or last week, mm -hmm. and when they began to share that uh, veteran's story, if I grew up here in Philly. But then he went away, and he served in the Korean conflict. And oh God, the memories mm -hmm, mm -hmm. out of the nine boys that my parent had. I was the only one born in South Carolina. And why was I born in South Carolina? Because my father served also in the Korean conflict. Mm -hmm. Memories mm -hmm. of the grace of God. Amen. Amen. Him, oh God. In number 257. Standing on the promises of Christ, my King, through eternal ages, let his praises ring. Glory in the highest, I will shout and sing. Standing on the promises of God, I said, I'm standing. Standing on the 
ministers of Christ the Lord, bound to Him eternally by love's strong cord, overcoming daily with the Spirit's sword, set on standing on the cross Take God at his word and trust him all the way to the end of our journey. Thank you, Lord. Good morning. Good morning. Building on a sure foundation, upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Matthew 16, 18. For other foundation can no man lay to that to his lay, which is Jesus Christ, 1 Corinthians 3.11. Building faith, family, and fellowship on the principles and promises of God's word. Our thought for today, keep your eyes on me. Waves of adversity are washing over you, and you feel tempted to give up. As your circumstances consume more and more of your attention, you are losing sight of me. Yet I am with you always, holding you by your right hand. I am fully aware of your situation, and I will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able to bear. Your greatest danger is worrying about tomorrow. If you carry tomorrow's burden today, you will stagger on the load and eventually fall flat. You must discipline yourself to live within the boundaries of today. It is in the present moment that I walk close to you, helping you carry your burdens, keep your focus on my presence in the present. My presence in the present. Psalm 73, 23, 1 Corinthians 10, 13. Our key theme in verse for 2022. Be still, be, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Say it Psalm 46, 10, 10, 11. Maintain your godly focus. The year has changed. The pandemic is still here. Vaccines and boosters are available. Remember, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. That's Psalms 24, 1. Trust in him, depend on him, and rely on him. Sunday, February the 27th, morning worship begin at 11 a.m. Sunday, March the 6th, 8 a.m. is our women's prayer fellowship. Morning worship begins at 11 a.m. Sunday, March the 13th, 8 a.m. is our PDM. And 11 a.m. our morning worship. And following morning worship will be the Holy Communion. Amen. Amen. At church, amen. 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 There is uh, an announcement that I do want to identify uh, for those that may have set your calendars hard already, um, the first Sunday in March, which will be next Sunday, uh, in your older bulletins you may recall that Reverend Linwood Childs was scheduled to be here with us. We have rescheduled 
that particular service. And in its stead, I want you to be praying for his wife uh, so that the Lord might bless her as she's going through some challenges uh, that God has been already uh, taken care of. Amen? Yes. Uh, yes. It, he, he, he would have been able to come, but then uh, I, I want him to be here again. What is our mission statement? That we ought to build faith, what? Family, Family. And, fellowship. and fellowship. Amen? <clears throat> and for him to be all the way up here and concerned about his wife back there, uh, to me, uh, if it's something that we can adjust to help him to be free in his spirit and free for his family, that's something that we can do. Amen? Amen. I've been there, and I've done that, and I know that uh, even when things are going well, if your heart is here and your mind is there, it's still, you know, God, didn't, God gets us through. Amen? But there's so much more a pleasant journey when she's able to be with him. Amen? Yes. Uh, again, I don't have, uh, oh, as far as the uh, statement that we have in there about pandemic, there are a lot of changes in the recommendations of the CDC and things like that. But I want you to be aware that there are a lot of folks that have been cutting corners all along. So don't take for granted that just because uh, they have said this and said that. Now, even in the athletic world, there are folks that have been faking, and, and uh, there have been uh, reports of folks that have stolen cards and stuff like mm -hmm. that, so you don't know who you're really dealing with. Uh, and they're saying that um, uh, I, I spoke with the uh, safety manager uh, a safety manager just a couple of days ago, and he said they're looking to make uh, some kind of determination as to whether they can drop the things from the inside. And and the, the issue is, if you're uncomfortable, keep them on. Amen. Yes. Put them on. Uh, one of the things uh, here in the city of Philadelphia, they are the first from what I was looking at. They have made a a uh, declaration that no. It's uh, one of the theaters downtown. And although the city says that they can uh, drop the uh, mask from the inside, they say that they're going to keep theirs on. Not only are they going to keep them on, but for the folks to come into that environment, they want proof of your vaccination, proof of your booster, and all of that stuff. Why? Because they said they don't want to come this far and wind up having to turn that thing back. Amen? Amen. Uh, isn't it amazing that those in high places are starting to show up, show up, yeah. show up with these different things. So I love you and all that kind of stuff, but you can rest assured, I, I got a master. Amen. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, uh, we will continue to be diligent and faithful as God brings us through these things. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yes. Amen. Even in a service that I went to... Uh, uh, a lot of the services that you're starting to see, they still got their signs up, but that's not what you see in their practice. Yeah. Are you hearing me? This morning we want to talk about don't get comfortable. Right. Amen? Amen? We're going to talk about don't get comfortable. And uh, it's, it's really important that we, we practice those things. So be prayerful for the childses. Be prayerful for... Uh, um, the world at large, let's be prayerful for the folks down in, over in, uh, in the Ukraine. Uh, I went to school with some Ukrainians uh, back in, as a matter of fact, it was uh, the summer of the, as I transitioned into high school. Uh, he and I, we studied German together in a class. But when I left here on Thursday evening, as I was I took the judge, you know, I take different paths all over because I like to see the different changes and areas where we need to be prayerful. But as I went to go through past the art museum, they had that whole place lined up with folks with protests, with their signs, etc., etc. Now, we know that those signs over here are not stopping the bombs over there, but we know that prayer can get where the sign can't get. So let us be, I don't know why, yes I do, 
uh, because even in the scripture there are scenarios just like this yeah. and it was God that brought folk through yeah. amen, amen. Yeah. And, 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 and we don't know the end of this thing but we know who holds the entire thing in his hand so we want to continue to trust the Lord and we're going to ask that we be led in prayer at this time and then we're going to continue drop anchor and we just want to speak for a short period of time about not getting comfortable. Amen? Amen. 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 You guys pray, 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 pray for your pastor right now, you know. There's, uh, there's a lot of weight and a lot of uh, concerns. Amen. My Lord. Most holy and everlasting God, our Father, Lord, we thank you once again for another chance to come in your house of prayer. Lord, we thank you just for an opportunity to be able to lift our voices and say thank you. Lord, we thank you right now just for keeping us safe thus far. Lord, we thank you right now. We ask you to, we ask your blessings upon this time, our time here upon those that are gathered here, yeah. upon those that are that are watching over the over the over the, the airwaves. Lord, we ask that you would bless, strengthen, and keep. Lord, we ask that you would meet those meet those physical and emotional needs. Lord, but more importantly we ask that you would meet those spiritual needs. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> Lord, we ask that you would bring folks ever more mindful yes, to the right. fact that you are in control. You control all things and there's nothing that can happen without your mighty hand of approval. Lord. Lord, we ask that you would just bless uh, bless those who are called on our sick and shut in. Lord, we ask that you would, you would touch their bodies. Lord, encourage them to know that, Lord, you are still in control. Lord, we ask, I ask you to touch my body. Lord, Amen. touch my mind and my spirit. Lord, you know the, you know the situations yes. that I'm undergoing right now. And you know the decisions that will be coming up in the next couple of days. Yes. But Lord, we, I ask that you would continue to just control the hand and the, the, hand and the mind of the doctors. Yes. Lord, those who you've given care, you've given the charge to care for me. That, yeah, Lord, yeah, they Lord. might make wise decisions yeah. that, Lord, in the outcome, I might still be able yeah. to go forth and share and encourage yes. and be a living witness for you. Lord, in all things, great and small, Lord, that you, would, you might make our lives a living witness yeah. that others might see and desire to be blessed. Lord, we ask that you would, we ask that you would bless the service right now. Lord, touch Pastor Graves, touch his body. Lord, we ask that you would just you would just prepare him, Lord, to to be used as a vessel to pour out your your word, your spirit upon us. Lord, we ask that you would touch the child's family, Lord, yeah, in a special and a mighty way. Lord, you've challenged them, you charged them, and Lord, you 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 continually encourage us through them in standing on faith and standing yeah. on standing on the yes. goodness yes. that comes from living and loving a God such as you. Yes. Lord, we ask that you would encourage them and keep them mindful that though we are we may not be side by side, Lord, we're we're linked together in spirit and the prayers of the righteous avail yes. us much. Lord, we ask that you would bless this service and everything that's said and done may be said and done to your praise, honor, and your glory. Let your spirit go out among the masses. And Lord, we know that you said in your word that you, your word will not return void. Lord, work in this world. Work in these people. Lord, do what you've already, you've already, already ordained. And Lord, we ask that you would just bless us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Let church say amen. 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 Let us continue to thank and praise God. And one of the things that uh, has been a per personal practice of mine 
is even as I'm praying, I ask God to, uh, to help me to be mindful mm -hmm. of those that I need to be praying for. Mm -hmm. So that throughout the course of the day, throughout the course of what you're going through, God may in his own unique way uh, cause you to continue to pray for folks that you know that we make commitments to pray for. Uh, there is a, a former classmate that uh, uh, Bill and Chrissy, um, um, what's Bill's last name? Campbell. And they're missionaries over there in France. And I, I did not get their newest uh, newsletter or prayer letter printed out, but perhaps we'll start printing those out and either post them out there or uh, uh, as we uh, continue to develop and get better at some of the uh, cyber activities, we might be able to uh, get some things posted and or, uh, I, I'm so old school that I don't have a problem with snail mail, amen? Amen. You, you know, send you a little letter here and there and I'm getting to the point where even a birthday card, I'll put it in the mail. Or, or a card of encouragement, I'll put it in the mail. Amen. Because all of a sudden, you go out there and you think you got nothing but junk, and then you look up and say, wow, somebody thought about me. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. Isn't that the way God works? Amen. Amen? Amen. God can act faster than, than the, uh, the, the Internet when he wants it. Are you hearing me? All right, this morning, just for the, uh, the exhortation of our offertory uh, passage, I want you to look at uh, Luke 22, 1 through 3. Luke 22, 1 through 3. Amen. And uh, this is uh, one of those uh, areas where we want to remember one of the things that uh, I had a lot of activity in dealing with this week was, again, uh, elder care. For the last several years, elder care and senior servicing has become one of the bedrocks of my activities. For those that recall when my mother got ill and I was working hardcore full time, amen? And, and uh, the Lord began to speak at my heart about, uh, um, about caregiving. And, uh, you know, I, I have a way of talking to the Lord, uh, which is, you know, when you should be able to speak your heart to the Lord. Amen? Amen? And I wasn't speaking negative, and I wasn't speaking in rebellion, but when the Lord started whispering in my heart about caregiving, mm -hmm. amen, elder care and all that, um, I'm saying, I said, well, I say, uh, that, uh, amen, amen. <laughs> God is answering. He's confirming. Amen. <laughs> Amen. That brother got an inside track. But what I was saying was, Lord, uh, yeah, uh, that ain't my gift. And the Lord just said, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So for those that know, God really helped me uh, through several years. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. And recently, I was able to touch base Amen. with uh, some family members, mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. who have been going through in that same block of time. Mm -hmm. And I did not know that they were going through, but I'm going to try to touch base with them uh, by phone call this week. Mm -hmm. uh, we've been swapping texts and and uh, we've not tech well messages or what they call it DMs or whatever. And uh, also, I come across certain pictures, and I would send those pictures to different folks, and, and it, it just lifted their spirits. Mm -hmm. and, and it reminds me that this thing, even though mom's gone, mm -hmm. that particular ministry has not failed. Yes. We need to remember to continue to pray for Sister Robinson. Amen? Amen. Yes. Amen. But uh, in this particular... Um, exhortation this morning, uh, Luke 21 and uh, 1 through 3. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to read it directly out of King James. Believe it or not, I, I just love the raw language of King James. Amen. 
In verse 1 he says, uh, and he, talking about Jesus, looked up and saw the rich men casting their gifts mm -hmm. into the treasury. Yeah. And he saw also a certain poor widow yeah. casting in thither two monies. Mm -hmm. And he said of a truth, I say unto you mm -hmm. that this poor widow hath cast in more than they all. Verse 4. Mm -hmm. For all these have of their abundance cast in unto the offerings of God, mm -hmm. but she of her penury, of her need, hath cast in all the living that she had. Mm -hmm. And I want you to ponder that, and I want you to think about that, because mm -hmm. here again, the rich folks, they cast in all of their mm -hmm. abundance. Amen? Mm -hmm. But this woman, she cast in of her penury or of her need. And I just want you to think about the fact that uh, we can get so comfortable and so complacent. Hear me now. Hear me well. We get so comfortable and complacent in our place of being blessed. Yes. Amen. We can become so comfortable in our place of blessing. Yes. That we shut our eyes. Turn our heads. Toward those that are in need. Amen? Amen? Yes. That being said, I want you to direct your attention to James chapter 1. I'm going to read this morning that same passage that we basically read last Sunday. I'm going to read it from the New Living Translation. James chapter 1. <clears throat> amen? Yes. If you have it, say amen. If you need more time. But listen to how it reads in the New Living. Hallelujah. Translation. And we're still talking about not getting comfortable. Amen? Amen. Amen. Folks, not get comfortable. Mm -hmm. Folks are getting so comfortable we can make it back down to the games. Mm -hmm. yeah. Folks are getting so comfortable we can make it to all kinds of ventures. Mm -hmm. Folks are getting so comfortable we come and go as we please. We'll lock stock up the malls. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but we don't want to stop by and encourage our brothers and sisters in the Lord. See, there might be something I can see in your face. Mm -hmm. and your, you might not even be walking like you used to walk. You might not be walking as fast as you used to walk. Well, well. You might have a limp. You might have an eye that has a flicker mm -hmm. that I didn't see online. Oh, God. Oh, God, help me this day. Yes. Yes. James 1, beginning with verse 19, New Living Translation, says, Understand this, my dear brothers and sisters. You must all be quick to listen, mm -hmm. slow to speak, mm -hmm. slow to get angry, Human anger does not produce the righteousness of God desires. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So get rid of all the filth and evil in <laughs> your lives and humbly accept the word God has planted in your hearts. Mm -hmm. 
For it has the power to, to save, save your soul. Your soul. Mm -hmm. Now here's what I want you to really highlight and draw some strong inference. Mm -hmm. Beginning with verse 22. But don't just listen mm -hmm. to God's word. You must do yes. what it says. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, mm -hmm. you are mm -hmm. fooling yourself. Well. Uh. Uh. Oh God. Mm -hmm. You cannot read that without personally examining your own heart, spirit, behavior, and attitude. Mm -hmm. Verse 23. For if we listen to the word and don't obey it, it is like glancing at your face in a mirror. You see yourself walk away and forget what you look like. But if you look carefully into the perfect law that sets you free. See, 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 the text is saying what the, 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 the job of the law is. Mm -hmm. And then he says, and if you do what it says, mm -hmm. and don't forget what you heard, then God will bless you. Why? For doing it. 26, if you claim to be religious, but don't control your tongue, mm -hmm. you are fooling yourself. yourself. I want you to think about those two phrases. Yourself, yourself, yourself. We, we, we're going we're gonna to scratch the itch on that. <laughs> and your religion is worthless. Mm -hmm. Pure and genuine religion in the sight of God the Father means caring. Did you hear that word? Caring. You need to underline it. Caring. I had a conversation just recently. Because the next phrase says caring for orphans. Mm -hmm. I had that conversation not only here, but I had that conversation with some, 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 some uh, family folks. I say at this particular time in our lives, we have become orphans. Why? Because all both of our parents are gone. Yes. Amen? Now, I'm not left here strung out. I still got God that I can depend on. But do you realize the impact and the influence that our parents have had in our lives? Yes. My mother and Miss Jackson were close. And while Miss Jackson was here and, and, and well and all those kind of things, I told her during her lifetime, if anything happened to my mama, you're it. Why? Because she treated me like her own son. Are you? Yes. Somebody need to pray with your pastor today. Pure and genuine religion in the sight of God the Father means caring for orphans and widows in their distress. And I guess the, 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 the trigger for me right now is watching all those folks become orphans and widows and widowers and childless in all this senseless bombing of a self-righteous demagogue. And the bottom line is, if we're not praying for them, if we're not praying that God would intervene, amen? amen. Whatever God's plan is, our commission is to pray. Amen? amen? God's purpose for why this thing is happening and how he manages it, that's not my business. Our business is not to get so comfortable that we feel disengaged because that's over that side of the world and we're over here. All yes. you understand, somebody need to pray. Amen. Yes. With your Amen. Amen. Lord God. I even have a song on my heart this morning. Mm -hmm. 
and I think I misplaced it. But that's all right. Uh, no, I didn't. I know where it is. Be not dismayed, whatever be times, God <coughs> will take care of you.
I'm going to read as a backdrop portion of scripture that Paul wrote. One of the uniquenesses of the Holy Writ is that it's one manuscript and it was written over scores of years. And out of all those years and God compiled and preserved what he wanted us to have. Yet there is continuity of the thought and the mind of God. Mm. Hallelujah. And God said through the Apostle Paul mm -hmm. in Galatians chapter 6, mm. verses 7 through 9, He said, Be not deceived. Mm -hmm. God is not mocked. But whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. And let us not be weary, worn down, woke out. In, oh God, well doing. Mm. For in due season, in the proper season, in God's season, mm -hmm. we shall reap if we think not. Yeah. Yeah. Now, keeping that in mind and thinking about what James's mission was, mm -hmm. and remember now, this is still a segue out of Joshua preparing a brand new people to go into a brand new field of living. Amen. James was able several generations later to tell us and to prepare a church that was going into, into in, in, that was being scattered abroad. He was telling them that I don't want you to get complacent. I don't want you to get comfortable. But James was not telling what James felt. James was telling what God said. Mm -hmm. Amen? And, and, and Paul comes along a little later on and said, don't get weary. Even though you're still going to be tested. Well. You're still going to go through some hard stuff. You're still going to go through some difficult times. Mm -hmm. He said, but don't get weary. Amen? Yeah. In your well-doing. Just keep doing well. Regardless of how it seems like it's shaking out. Amen? I heard the testimonies and I watched the testimonies of some folks that were there, that are there, and they said, well, you know something, I, I, I see a lot of my folks going and trying to get out, but some are going to stay and try to, try, try to deal with this thing. Yeah. Don't get weary in your well-doing. Amen? Amen? God, we pray this morning. That by your spirit, yes. you will unite our understanding of some of the things, some of the things mm -hmm. that, that you're presenting today. Yes, so that when we leave this place, we have a greater determination to allow the spirit of the living God mm -hmm. to help us to focus more intentionally. On your word, yes. your will, yes. your way. Yes. God, we thank you. Mm -hmm. God, we thank you in yes. advance. Thank you for Jesus. Yes. So as Paul makes some things clear, James is trying to present some things. Mm -hmm. We need to understand, amen, mm -hmm. that Far too often, we start getting comfortable right where we are. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. Anybody ever been comfortable? We get comfortable where we are. Mm -hmm. Where do we get comfortable? Sometimes we get comfortable on our jobs. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. And then sometimes we get comfortable in our homes. Mm -hmm. We get comfortable in our relationships. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I want you to keep that. Underline in your mind. Mm -hmm. 
Because when you start talking about relationships, you're talking about more than just the person that lives next door to you. You're talking about relationships with family members. You're talking about relationships with those that you come in contact with. You're talking about relationships in your family, your intermediate family. You're talking about relationships between husbands, wives, and etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But you're also talking about a relationship that's embedded in your walk with the Lord. Amen? Amen? See, we fail, where we fail, we don't look back at our beginnings and see how far and how far we have stepped away. <clears throat> I don't know why, but here lately I've been looking at a lot of old, old pictures. Mm-hmm. And then I sat down and I started sending out these little texts. Try to create like a little fun time thing. Do you know who this is? And I even say, okay now. Here's the contest. For all those that get them all right. You know, you can uh, get a prize out of Pop Pop's little secret snack bar. <laughs> Amen? Amen? I ain't got no money to give you. I can give you an Oreo. I'll give you a cookie or two. <laughs> See, we started in innocence. And complacency slips in. Some of us know about that. When complacency slips in, Here's our key word for today. Deception. Mm -hmm. Take so. I told you that Galatians was an undertone because in that, that, that uh, portion that Paul sends to the church as he identifies, he said, be not what? D.C. In James, what did he say? If you look in the mirror and you walk away, and all you're doing is hearing the Word of God, and you're not doing the Word of God, he says in the New Living Translation, he said, you fooling yourself. Amen? Mm -hmm. And that comes down to a word I like called self-deception. What did Paul say? You're deceiving what? Yourself. So when, 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 when complacency slips in and deception takes over, now we have a problem. Because deception can be extremely destructive. In the political arena, there was a lot of deception in the last few years. Part of that deception had to do, and, 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 and trust me, y'all pray, pray with me, because I don't want to spend our time in the political atmosphere. However, we are still responsible for preaching and living a relevant gospel. Mm -hmm. We need to take what God says and overlay it with where we're living. Mm -hmm. But there was some deceptive conversation going on in the last administration. And the same guy that's taking advantage of all these folks now, and the same guy that's looking us right in the eye and say, regardless of what y'all plan to do, I'm going to do what I want to do. That sounds like somebody unique, doesn't it? Ah, mm -hmm. oh, but I want to challenge you. Mm -hmm. Turn in your Bibles because I want you to read it with me. Mm -hmm. The Genesis chapter 3. Hmm. Are you understanding what I'm saying? See, it's got to, you've got to see the relevance of it. You've got to see how, I say, deception was right there in the very beginning. Amen. Mm -hmm. It began, beginning in the Garden of Eden, we can see the unfolding of deceptive conduct. And even there, it did not catch God off guard. Do you understand my thrust this morning? Amen. 
regardless of what's going on against you, regardless of what's going on around us, regardless of what's going on in our world, it did not catch God off guard, and it does not have God off guard now. I don't want you panicking. I don't want you to get all fret-filled. Amen. Didn't David say something that fret not because of what? Evil doers. Amen. We still have a, the same God sitting on the same throne, running what? The same world. By what? The same power. The same authority. But let's look at this thing. You see, you and I need to see that God knows what's going on, and we need to see and understand this thing called deception. Because if you don't understand how it works, you're going to find yourself getting tripped up. What do you mean get tripped up? What did James say? He said, we will look directly at the word. Amen. 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 And we'll look at ourselves. And then we will turn around and walk away from the word. But when we walk away, we done forgot what the word has already said. We have already forgotten what the word has told us that we need to do. We have forgotten the instructions that God has laid out for us. Look at the text. Verse 1, Genesis 3. And this I'm going to go straight out of, I think I went out of the, uh, yeah, I think I went directly out of the old King James. Now the serpent was more subtle, that's a slick word, isn't it? Than the beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, you shall not eat. Of every tree of the garden. Amen. Mm -hmm. Now we come and we, we, we study the Bible. And we sit in Sunday school. And we sit in vacation Bible school. And, and, and we've heard the Ten Commandments. We've heard all these different things that God has to say. And we still go out there and do our own thing. Don't we? Amen. Amen? Amen. So, so, so the, the, the serpent is speaking to this woman. Verse 2. The woman said unto the serpent. We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. But. Of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said. What did he say? You shall not eat of it, neither shall you what? Touch it, lest you die. I mean, she was all into it, and she said some things that God didn't even say. Amen? Mm -hmm. And the serpent, amen, the serpent said unto the woman, you shall not surely die. Amen. Mm -hmm. Ain't that what the drug pusher says to the person that he wants to buy his merchandise? <coughs> Isn't that what they don't, don't they make it colorful to a young novice that has never drank? Isn't that the way they make it uh, 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 colorful for those that have never engaged in certain practices that we know the Bible don't want us involved in? Amen? Go to Proverbs 7. What the scriptures say? How the woman say, yo, come on over here. My husband, he gone. He gone to work. Yeah, look how, you know, you know, I, I got this thing all set up for you. Amen? For God, verse 5, God doth know. Serpent actually implies God's a liar and that God is trying to deceive us. God doth know that in the day that you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open and you shall be what? As God. You're going to be equal with him. You're going to be on a par with him. Knowing good and evil. Well, what's the advantage in knowing good and evil? Because if I don't know evil, then, you know, I, I ain't going to trek down that way anyway. Mm -hmm. Verse 6. When the woman saw that the tree was, and these are the principles that we've been hearing all the way through. These are the same tests. The same test items that Jesus was confronted by in the wilderness. Amen. These are the same things you and I are being tested by. When the woman saw that the tree was what? Good for food. Amen. Oh man, that stuff will make you feel fine. Amen. And that it's pleasant to the eyes. I told you I'm cute and I told you I got a place for you. Amen. And the tree is to be desired to make one wise. Man, if you know this stuff, look, you, you can come and you can go and you can do what you want to do. She took the fruit thereof and did what? Eat. Eat. And gave also unto what? Her husband. Her husband what? With her. Did you see that? 
Mm -hmm. Did you see that? Yeah. Amen. Amen. And what? He did he. And what we begin to see is how deception starts sliding in. Amen. Amen. It slides in through a conversation that dangles things, dangles <laughs> ideas, dangles desires. And we get complacent. Amen. Amen. When I was in debt, oh, I was down there on the front row of the prayer line. Mm -hmm. Now that I got a better job, I start moving back in the pews. Yeah. Now that I got a lot of money, I go all the way back and I start following back my time for worship. Mm -hmm. And now that, uh, hey, uh, you know, I got me a, a, a bank account. I got me a 401k. And I got me a, a Jesus Christ, you stay away. Y'all heard what I said. And I'm not going to deny that that's the mindset. Mm -hmm. They had everything that they needed. Everything they could ever want. And then the serpent slides up alongside them and say, look what you can have. You know God lying to you. Amen. Amen. Why should I keep going to church now? I done got everything I was praying for. I might as well tear down these old barns and build me some new barns. And I'm going to eat and I'm going to drink and I'm going to get addicted. Watch out now. <laughs> and I'm going to get married. And after I get all jacked up. I'm gonna pray that the church. I'm gonna I'm gonna go down there. I'm gonna fall on the mercy of the church and have them to help me to get back up out of this mess. And when I get back up out of this mess, I'm going back out that door. Come on, church. Amen. The Bible says, verse seven, and the eyes of them who both. both. Their eyes of them both were open, and they what? Knew. Knew. knew, knew. That they were naked. Now, remember, our text tells us that James is challenging us not to just be hearers of the word, but what? Be doers of the word. Now, when you hear it, you have an opportunity to what? Know it. Now you have to take the time and apply it. And the Bible says that once they were exposed to this deception, the deception kicked in and took over, and now they knew things that they did not need to know. Amen? Amen. The eyes of them both were open. They knew that they were naked. They sewed fig leaves. You see how smart they got? Mm -hmm. Amen. Things that they didn't know before, they didn't worry about no... No fig leaf. And talking about sewing, <coughs> sewing leaves together. Amen. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. Well, why did they need an apron? They didn't need it before. Mm -hmm. Verse 8. And they heard the voice of the Lord. Now, isn't it interesting? They were hearing God's voice all along. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. They understood whose voice that was. And they heard the voice of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. I know that there are some folk that can't come back. Could be for some reason. Could be illness. Could be a whole lot of stuff. But it shouldn't be because of fear. It could, shouldn't be because you doubt that God can keep you safe from the pandemic. Do you know that there are folks that are giving up their jobs and they're claiming that it's because of fear of the virus? Are you, are you understanding where I'm going? See, these folks were hiding from God. They were hiding from the one that made them. They were hiding from the one that gave them everything that they stood in need of. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. And the Lord called, verse 9, Adam and said unto him, Where are you? He said, I heard your voice in the garden. 
I was. Now, it, it, here's the interesting thing. Verse 9. What did the Scriptures say? The Lord God called unto Adam. Adam. And said unto him. Can I say it in an ubonic way? Mm -hmm. Where you at, boy? Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. Where are you? And he said, I heard your voice in the garden, and I was afraid. Because what? I was naked. And what? I hid myself. Now, at that particular point, you don't see him blame shifting. <coughs> Amen? Amen? And he said, we told, who told you? This is God speaking. Who told you that you were naked? How ha hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? Now you see, at first he was ready to protect his wife. <laughs> but then he said in verse 12, the man said, the woman whom what? You be. So where did the blame go now? Is it real? Where did the blame go? He said, the woman whom what? You gave me. You gave me. You, all right? yeah, yeah, yeah. you understand where I'm going? God. Mm -hmm. Amen? God. God, I wouldn't have this problem if you would have straightened it out. God, they wouldn't have that bombing over there if you would have took him out. Come on, let's talk about it. We need to be real. We develop these, these, these funny way of thinking, and when you start thinking funny, you pray funny. Well, you don't pray at all. Yes. Are we understanding where I'm going? I, I, I don't know if we're going to get through this today. Because there's so much and it's still flooding my spirit. And the scripture says, he said, who told you? But well, let me drop down to verse 12. And the man said, the woman whom you gave to be with me. She gave me of the tree. And I did eat. So the first blame went to God. Yeah. Secondary blame went to what? So he willing to, to, to protect her all the way up to pushing it back up on God. If God would have accepted that blame, yeah. and isn't it the way that some of us are? We try to train our children. We try to teach them. And then when they still go wrong, what do we do? We jump in the way. <coughs> Amen. Yeah. And we try to protect them. Amen. God's getting ready to rain justice on them, and we still try to protect them. And Samuel did the same thing with King Saul, and what did God say? No, 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 you need to get out the way. It's not you. He didn't reject you. He rejected what? Me. We need to understand how deception works. And deception will cause a problem in your relationship between you and your God. What did Isaiah say? It, it, my hand is not short that I can't save you. And my ear is not heavy that I can't hear you. But because of your what? Your iniquity have separated between you and your God that I will not hear you. That scares me. It scares me when we allow complacency and, 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 and I'll allow ourselves to get so far from God that God will tell you straight up. It's something that you got between you and me. And because of what you got between you and me, I'm not going to listen to you. Wasn't it God to say, pray without ceasing? Yes. Wasn't it God saying, all men ought to always pray? Yes. Wasn't it God to say, we ought to pray continually? Amen. Mm -hmm. In every situation, in every set of circumstances. But now the same God says, regardless of the fact that I told you to pray, in this set of circumstances, in this situation, I'm not going to listen to you. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. I don't have my glasses on because I don't want to look at nobody today. <laughs> oh God, have mercy on me. <clears throat> Scripture goes on to say, the Lord God said, see, after he said, the woman that you gave me, she gave me to, of the tree, that, and I did eat. Now, notice how God operates. God didn't excuse Adam and say, you off the hook. 
He just wanted to collect more data. Now, hear me and hear me well. God wanted to collect more data, or he was collecting more data, but I need you to understand something. While God is collecting more data, he already has all the data that he needs. Mm -hmm. Come on, somebody need to pray with me. Amen. 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 So while you're trying to shove it off on somebody else, God already knows the source. God already knows the beginning and the end. God already knows exactly where this thing lies. I often say that we're always in some kind of test. Does that look like they were already in a test? Mm -hmm. And the Bible goes on to say that the Lord, in verse 13, the Lord God said unto who? The woman. What is this that you have done? And the woman said what? The serpent did what? He beguiled me and what? I did eat. She ain't said nothing about her husband. She ain't said nothing about her generosity. Amen. Amen. Y'all not listening to me. Y'all not here. Oh, no, 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 no. Amen. See, see, he was her covering. Are you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Husbands, look at me. We are our wives' covering. Oh, yes. By virtue of the, 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 the order in which God made things. I don't care nothing about when folks start talking about equal this and equal that. You might be equal here and you might be equal there. But when God set things in order, he said, husbands do what? Love your wives and treat them the way Christ did the church. Who was willing to suffer, to bleed, and to die. That he might present it back to himself a glorious church. Without spot and ring. You yes. are your wife's covering. Mm -hmm. God didn't let him off the hook. Mm -hmm. yeah. The scripture says. That she identified the fact that the serpent beguiled her. Mm -hmm. And that was a fact. The serpent did slip in. Mm -hmm. And he beguiled her. He, 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 he worked his wiles. Mm -hmm. Amen. And, and, and the scripture says in a wily way. And the Bible says that the Lord God said, see now, he heard what she had to say. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. And then he stepped on past her and he's still collecting data. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then God said unto who? The serpent. The serpent. Mm -hmm. Now, when he got to the serpent, he didn't ask him what his motive was. Yeah. Yeah. He didn't ask him why you do that. Amen? Amen. You know, when you go to get, uh, you're on the hot seat, mom and dad, they bring you in and they want to know why you do that. Mm -hmm. Amen? When God got to the serpent, he just says, because. Mm -hmm. I told you God already has the data mm -hmm. that he needs. Yeah. Because you have done this, you are cursed. Above all the cattle, Above every beast of the field, upon the belly you shall go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of your life. And then, after God tells the serpent, amen, mm -hmm. after he tells the serpent about his curse, mm -hmm. God tells him mm -hmm. the end result, and God offers us a promise. Mm -hmm. If you'll notice, when James says that I don't want you to stop and just be a hearer of the word. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Folks will come and they'll hear enough. Amen. Mm -hmm. To look partially good. Mm -hmm. And then slip on out and we forget that we're supposed to do what we heard. Mm -hmm. Are you hearing what I'm saying? See, so so what, what, what happens is, as God told the serpent what his curse was, then he offers a promise of our redemption. He says in verse 15, I will put enmity between what? These, still talking to the serpent, and the woman, and between what? Her seed, and what? At your seed, and her seed, and it shall do what? Bruise your head, and thou shalt bruise his what? Heel. That is the promise of the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
The serpent's head is going to be bruised because he's going to be destroyed. Mm -hmm. And that's still yet to come. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 And, and, and Jesus, what did he do? He bruised his heel. Mm -hmm. He bruised him physically. And Jesus died, but what did he do? He got back up. Yeah. Are you here? Amen. See, hell is prepared for the devil. Amen. Amen. And didn't the Bible say that he will be weeping, there's going to be a gnashing and weeping and gnashing, and, and it's an eternal place. Eternal. But here's where it gets important for you and I. See, in the garden, the serpent was flagged as the deceiver. And James cautions us on what? Deceiving ourselves. Amen? Amen. Throughout the scripture, there are many examples of how deception slipped into individual lives and took over later. We'll look at how the nation of Israel, under Joshua's leadership, later on. Remember now, we're still under that vein where Joshua is trying to prepare these folks for a brand new walk into a brand new place. And guess what? You and I are still being prepared Amen. to walk daily in a new set of an environment. Yeah. Amen? Amen? Now, what happens is, you see how committed Joshua was to God and to God's word and trying to make sure that the folks knew and understood these things. But I said earlier, complacency will slip in. When we get back under the umbrella and we start looking at the actual practical walk of the children of Israel under Joshua's leadership, you and I will get to a place where in the, in the ninth chapter of Joshua, there's a group called the Gibeonites. And the Gibeonites slipped in and they worked wildly. Here's a word, W-I-L-I-L-Y. In, 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 in Joshua 9 and verse 4, that was the term they used. They worked wildly, which means deceptively, sneakily, creepingly into the life of that body of believing folks trying to transition into the way of God. And what happens? They got jacked up. Amen? So the thing is that we want to look at, we want to look at the benefit of looking back. You and I have the benefit of looking back so that we can move forward. Amen. First and foremost, we want to look at the danger of hearing only. What is the danger of hearing only? He already said that if we hear and don't apply the principles of God's word, we're, going, we're deceiving ourselves. So when you run around and, and, and you're testifying, you're basically testifying. Mm -hmm. Because you're not where God needs us to be. There are things that God needs us to do. And, 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 in, and, and if we're not where God wants us, guess what? Mm -hmm. You're going to miss some opportunities that God has planned and prepared for you. Mm -hmm. I was sharing some things with my wife. And, and, and I still ponder these things. There were two incidents that are very important to me right now. Well, they're important because they're embedded now in my memory. There were two people that sent me word that they wanted to talk to me or send or they wanted to communicate something to me. And I did not go out of my way to get to them. And now both of them are in glory. And I can't help but ponder and wander. And my heart breaks. And I even say, God, can you get that information to me through another source? Are you understanding what I'm saying? He said, don't get comfortable. To the extent that you're hearing it and you're not doing what you need to be doing so that you collect that data. God could have a message for you. 
God could have an important thing that he wants to embed in your life, in your spirit, in your walk, in your journey. But if we fail, mm -hmm. amen, mm -hmm. by hearing only mm -hmm. and not doing what God is prompting us to do, we'll find ourselves in a bad scenario. Mm -hmm. Deception creeps in. And it comes, as James says, from the inside. Mm -hmm. Are you hearing me? Mm -hmm. You know, let me, let me, let me slow down for a second and give you a definition of deception. It's the act of causing someone to accept as true mm -hmm. or valid what is false or invalid. Isn't that what the serpent did to Eve? Mm -hmm. yeah. He painted that thing in such a way that she would believe him. Amen. A few weeks ago, a guy came by the house. He's driving down. He looked at my car. He saw that big gouge where somebody gouged my car across the street. And it had a big old dent in it. And all he said, he was in out of, out of work because they shut down the auto shop that he worked at. And he had all his tools and everything in the back of his car, there in the back of his truck. And, and he was riding around. Oh, he saw that. He said, I can do this and I can do that. And he, he gave me a price right off the spot. And, you know, okay, fine. All right, you know. Uh, and I'm looking and I'm listening. I said, okay. I said, you sure? And we talked back and forth and all that kind of stuff. So uh, he, 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 I gave him the job. And he did the job. And oh yeah, the big groove, it was, it was filled in. And he had all of this wax and everything all over it. I mean, I sat there and I saw him when he put the spray paint and all that kind of stuff. And then he put this sealer. He said a little sealer and all that. Then he put the wax on top of it and all that kind of stuff. He said, no, no, I'm waiting, you know, and I'm waiting on it to buff it out. No, 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 see, because of the temperature out here, you need to, you know, let that sit for o overnight. And then just take it right to, you know, either buff it out, wipe it off, or, or, or then he said, oh, I'll just take it right to the, to, the, to the wash. I take it to the wash. The groove is gone, but I can see the work. Are you understanding what I'm saying? See, he convinced me. And then I convinced my son. Oh, yeah, well, you can let him take care of that on yours, too. And he did the same thing on his, but guess what? He was gone. So the work that I thought was going to get done, the way that I thought it was going to get done, did not get done. Deception is crude. So what happens is, along with deception, is the fact or condition of being deceived. Deception of an artist. Something that deceives. Amen? Mm -hmm. So here's what happens. We find that 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 in all these different scenarios, and and uh, I believe we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna come up short today. Not short, because I believe that we've been in biblical text all morning. Mm -hmm. But I want you to begin to perhaps look at this concept or these these aspects of what are the dangers, amen, mm -hmm. of being, uh, of hearing only and not doing what God says? Mm -hmm. Self-deception. It comes from where? The inside. Amen? Mm -hmm. James said it. Paul said it. He said, be not, he said, you'll deceive yourself. Mm -hmm. Now, let's take a look at the scripture. And let's consider Samson. Everybody knows the story of Samson, amen? Mm -hmm. And what was Samson's problem? Well, Samson started having problems in relationships. But the relationships that are standing out and, 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 and magnified in the text, you see are more his local relationships. But you see, your local relationship, I'm talking about your horizontal relationships, <clears throat> are secondary to your vertical relationship with God. You saw a, 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 a damaged relationship with Samson and his parent. You saw a damaged relationship with Samson and his wife. You saw a downright nasty 
crucial a damage relationship with Samuel, Samson and his friends or peers. And then you see the most damning relationship with Samson and let's just say his girlfriend. Now what's so unique about his girlfriend? What did I say? The deception comes from within. Samson, I said from the beginning, we should not get comfortable. Mm -hmm. Samson knew who he was. He knew what he could do. He knew how he could get it done. And the Bible says that Samson had this girl named Delilah. And Delilah, what happened to Delilah? Does it sound similar to what happened back in the garden? Some folks went to Delilah and they offered her things. Ooh, money. Something good to have. Position and all that kind of stuff. And all they wanted was her to find out yeah. his secret. Amen? Yeah. Now why would she give up? This? So here again, it tells us something about the relationship she had with Samson. You know, how tight was it? How sincere was it? How unique was it? But she was willing to take the money. Now, here's the important thing. That, that, that time won't allow me to, to go into the deep, deep details of it. But how many times, mm -hmm. look at how many times she petitioned him. Here's the, 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 the unique thing. We get so comfortable that while we are failing, we are not acknowledging the fact that God is giving us grace. Every time we fail and God gives you an out, that's grace. Mm -hmm. Paul speaks about that in Romans, I believe, chapter 4. Mm -hmm. God, chapter 2, I think. God gives us grace mm -hmm. so that even when we are falling short, God gives us grace not to, you know, not to continue to fall all the way down in hope. So the Bible shows us that when Delilah was offered certain things, she put Samson to the test. And everything he told her to do, she did it to his specification. Mm -hmm. But here's the problem. Yeah. Amen? If you offer me something and it Gives me an upset stomach. Amen? I'm not eating with you no more. Not if I know you did it deliberately. Samson, where's the source of your strength? And what did he do? He told her. He told her what he wanted to tell her. And what did she do? She did exactly what he said. Amen? And then when he woke up, what did he do? Snap them back. She said, Oh, huh. So you gained in me. Mm -hmm. Amen? All right. So he tested her again. She tested him again. Come on, Samson. All right. What's the real deal? Amen. He told her something else. So she did it. Yeah. What did he do? Snap it again. Mm -hmm. are, are you understanding what I'm saying? Yeah. Look at all the grace God provides us. And what I'm trying to share with you is what James was trying to share and what Joshua was going to have to build into the hearts of these people. This is the way we need to trust God. You don't want to get yourself on the side of just hearing it and not doing it. Mm -hmm. So how many times did she deliberately test him in live situations before he was finally subdued or rendered helpless. Mm -hmm. See now, the relationship that Samson was toying with was the relationship he had with his horizontal, with his girlfriend. But the fact is that when you and I play tag with sin in a local way, we are also putting in a very, very dangerous way yeah. our relationship with God. Yeah. Because the Bible says, be sure your what? Yeah. Sin will find you out. Does God not say, 
that 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 he will deal with us according to over in uh, Je Jeremiah 17 and 9. God says uh, he speaks to us about how um, how the wickedness in our heart and God will deal with us according to the fruits of our labor. Amen. So we see that uh, uh, when, 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 when Samson went through all that mess and then ultimately he told her what she wanted to know. Look at how deception happens. So who was Samson deceiving? He wasn't necessarily, well yeah he did deceive her and that's what she pulled on him. Mm -hmm. But ultimately he deceived himself. And when he got to that particular point that God said, enough's enough. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? Then God had to deal with him. Yep. Amen? Amen? One last one, and I'm just going to make this real brief. Mm -hmm. What about David? Yeah. How many steps did David take yeah. before his complete failure with Bathsheba? Mm -hmm. And then remember, and I just want to highlight a couple things. First of all, he got up there, he was a peeping time. Mm -hmm. Peeping down over the roof. Yeah. Then he started inquiring. And, and that means that he had to draw some other folks into his sin. He sent folks down there to check her out. Brought back information. Then he sent folks down there to bring her in. And then when he brought her in, he sent them out while he did his thing. And then after he did his thing, he sent her out. And then the Bible says that she sent word back to him. When she sent word back to him, that, hey, we caught. Amen. Amen. Say, say, what happened? The deception was working from where? The inside. You and I need to be ever so careful. Yeah. Amen? Amen? He said, you hear it, and then you need to do it. What did, what did, what did Paul tell Timothy? Flee. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? Ours ought to be an, an operation of fleeing. Amen? Mm -hmm. So the Bible goes on to show that, that after David got word that she was praying, then David continued. To deceive who? Yeah. Amen. 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 He sent word. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Bring that boy home. Mm -hmm. He set the boy up. Yeah. So that he could go down and be with his wife. Mm -hmm. But because of his integrity. Amen. All right. Deception was not going to work him from the inside. Deception was working against his outside. But because he had a strong core he was not allowing it to get to his inside, to change his conduct, to change his behavior, to change his attitude, to change his direction, to change his walk, to change his relationship with God. Amen. See, there's a whole lot more going on than we might see when we just read across the line. The Bible says that when that didn't work, David set him up again. Amen. But where's the deception? It's still working on David's inside, not on Uriah's outside. Even as a drunk man, he had so much integrity yeah. that he wasn't going to violate the principles mm -hmm. of God. All right. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. See, yeah, that don't that don't mean just that, that, that don't mean the enemy won't come at us. But what did we say two weeks ago? It says when lust have what? Conceived. Mm -hmm. Amen? Verse 15. When lust has conceived, once it becomes impregnated, yeah, we're going to be tempted, we're going to see stuff, we're going to observe things, but once it conceives, mm -hmm. that's when we get all jacked up. Mm -hmm. all right. The Bible goes on to show that, that, that Uriah wasn't going to let that happen to him. Amen? And, and, and as we move on along, what did David do? David went on, set the man up, had the man murdered. Amen? Amen? Do you know that folks use that language differently? Mm. When they say kill, they say, you know, yeah, kill. That's a complacent word. But when you start talking about murder, mm. murder, oh man, folks get downright upset over that. And the Bible shows that David, even after going through that, and now he had the man murdered, and now he's going to take her <coughs> after her mourning period, and she's going to become his wife. And then the Bible says where his deception came from the inside, mm -hmm. conviction came from the upside. Mm -hmm. God sent Nathan in. Mm -hmm. And Nathan just raised a couple questions. Mm -hmm. But what God did with Nathan 
was he didn't go in there and jump up in David's face with his fist. Mm -hmm. Nathan went in and he went right to David's heart. Yeah. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Since the deception starts from the inside, God's going to bring the conviction from the upside to the inside mm -hmm. to work it through him. Nathan, knowing that David's background was a shepherd and how he loved shepherds, I mean sheep, and how he protected them, and he put his life on the line for them. How David killed a lion for them. How he killed a bear for them. All these great feats that David, that were close to his heart. And he told them a story about a man taking the one man's sheep and, 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 and slaying that man's sheep. Just because he didn't want to kill his own. And David was furious. And what the Bible said, mm -hmm. David went off. Mm -hmm. And when David got done ranting mm -hmm. and declaring what he was going to do, mm -hmm. Nathan, the prophet, mm -hmm. said, hey, David, 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 you the man. Are you understanding what I'm saying? See, see, there are times when God will let you and I go through all that mess. Yeah. Mm. We point accusing fingers at other folks. And we go through all that mess. Mm -hmm. And while we're going through all that mess, God is trying to get our attention to say, you are the man. I'm trying to, I'm going to have to bring this to a close. But there's something that I, I believe that we need to hear that Paul said. And as Paul wrote this, he said this. In, in Romans chapter 2, Paul says this. And I believe that this is something that's very important for all of us. Because as James is trying to challenge us, and as the Word is trying to bring us to the place of not getting comfortable. Amen? James says, uh, Paul says in chapter 2 of Romans, Therefore, you are inexcusable, O man, whosoever you are that judges, for wherein you judgest another, you condemn what? Yourself. Where does, the, where does this deception come? He said, you could, for you, thou that judgest the same, judges, doest the same things. Verse 2. But we are sure that the judgment of God is what? According, According to, to truth. truth. Where? Against, Against them which, commit, which com such things. commit such things. Verse 3. Thinkest thou this, O man, mm -hmm. that judges them, mm -hmm. which do such things, and doest the same, that thou shalt escape the judgment of God? Verse 4. Or despisest thou the riches of of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering. Watch this now. This is the phrase that I love. Not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth you to repentance. And my prayer is that you wrote that back. My prayer is that you jotted down that portion of Scripture so that you can go back and you can see it for yourself. Why? Because the preacher did not write that. God had that recorded. God had that preserved. God has that. And you see the continuity of the text. From Genesis all the way through. We're only down to James. Amen. We didn't get to Revelation all that. But the continuity of the text goes all the way through the entire Bible. We did not even go into Saul's life. And how the scripture says how God turned around and, 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 and we did identify the fact that Samuel was weeping for Saul and God said, uh-uh, out of the way. Amen. He didn't reject you. He rejected what? 
me. Why? Because the deception that he has presented is coming from the inside. Saul began to to, to, to change God's order, and Saul did what he wanted to do, and then when he was confronted and he declared very openly, we have done what the Lord has called us to do, and Samuel said, well, what's that bleating of the sheep that I hear here? He said, the people. <clears throat> you hear that? Mm -hmm. Them people you gave me. Mm -hmm. They did this and they did that. You see, it's important that the value of doing what God's, God's what the word says, verse 25, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna take her off right here. But if you look carefully into the perfect law that sets you free, and if you do what it says, and don't forget what you heard, then God will bless you for doing it. I'm saying it's so critically important that we don't get complacent. I'm saying it's so critically important that we remember where God brought us from. I'm saying it's so critically important that we remember that we still have an old sin nature that wants to rise up. We still have an old sin nature that wants to control our destiny. He wants to control our direction. He wants to control our thinking. He wants to control our environment. He wants to control our habits. The things that God delivered us from, He wants to remind us of them so that they might have, there's this, what's that, 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 that term that the folks use? Re reincarnation. Amen. He wants those things reinvented in our lives. He wants to repurpose them in our lives where God wants to repurpose in us a stronger, more de de definitive walk with Him. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yes. God wants us to remember that it was Christ who died for us. Mm -hmm. Amen. It was Christ that came. It was Christ who said, Father, forgive them for they know not what. It was Christ who hung on Calvary. It was Christ who that said, come unto me, all ye that labor, and are heavy laden, what? I'll give you the rest. It was Christ that said that if uh, my yoke is easy and my burden is light, it is Christ that said, if you abide in me, what? I'll abide in you. It is Christ that gives us victory. It is Christ that gives us joy. It is Christ that gives us power. It is Christ that gives us direction. It is Christ that will give us hope. And we need to really get right back into the text. And we need to revisit the joy of our salvation. We need to revisit how God went through the biblical text. And how God brought worlds of people yeah, yeah. deliverance. And we need to pray that way so that God might deliver folks from the yoke of bondage. That God might deliver that person that's on the doorstep of hell. So he might draw them unto himself. Yeah. But he can't draw them. Yeah. If he does not have, I want you to write this down, a credible witness. God needs credible witnesses. Credible witnesses. And a credible witness is somebody that recognizes and realizes our mission is not our mission. Our mission is the mission of God. What is the mission of God? To make Christ known. And as we make him known, he said he would draw all men unto him. Father, we praise you. And we thank you for your word. And we thank you for uh, allowing us to live at such a time as this. We know, Lord, that there are difficulties that are all around us. But, Lord, I, I just believe that if, if we were not those that you had called for such a time as this, Lord, we are like Esther. Mm -hmm. We're here in a time such as this. Yeah. And I believe that it was uh, Mordecai that, that said to Esther mm -hmm. that don't think that, that, that just because you may not get engaged or get involved mm -hmm. that this thing is going to skip past you. Mm -hmm. Father, we are in a time when, when folks need hope. Folks need help. Folks need to know and to understand that there is still a bomb in Gilead that can heal sin-sick souls, can heal 
that heart that is hardened. Father, I recall how you said in your word, you took Nebuchadnezzar and you set him down for a spell. And then there came a time when Nebuchadnezzar was able to say that God rules in the kingdom of men. Now, there were some folks that came along behind him that they continued to, to, to try to resurrect that old way of living in God. You, you even made them aware that you, in spite of all that they thought that they could do, you wrote on the wall, in the plaster, with a hand that nobody could shake. Oh, God. And in doing so, in doing so, they tried to offer Daniel gifts. Daniel said, keep your money to yourself. Because you offended God. Your deception has offended God. And God going to deal with you. So, Father, we pray. We pray for our world. We pray for our city. We pray for these bands of folks that are hardening their hearts and trying to de de develop these, these, these uh, new waves of, of corruption. We pray, Father God, for the individual soul that's sitting on the sideline and they're wondering, which way can I go? Which way should I go? We're asking God that you would help them to look up, to lift up their eyes. We pray, Lord, that you will help them to make like Zacchaeus. See, Zacchaeus didn't have a club meeting for folks to tell him what to do. There was a conviction, Lord. There was something that was troubling him from his inner heart. We pray that you will trouble the inner heart of this, 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 this person over in Russia. We pray that you'll trouble the inner hearts of his cabinet. We pray that you'll trouble oh God, 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 trouble the inner hearts of all those soldiers that are out there committing all these different things. Father, we pray that you would break the yoke of hardness in the hearts of mankind. We pray that you'll break the yoke of hardness in the hearts of those that are in these crime syndicates. We pray that you'll break those yokes and that they will begin to see that there is a God that is able, O oh Lord, to turn hard hearts. Stony hearts, you said, in the hearts of flesh. God, we pray. We pray that you would you would provide hope to those families who are all torn apart, not knowing where their loved ones are, not knowing how to comfort one another. Father, we pray that for a comforting wave of the Holy Spirit, a comforting wave of your love, a comforting wave, oh God, in the community of faith, so the Lord, folks, might know that you do exist. Father, we pray, even right now, even now, that if there's anyone in the sound of my voice, God, that does not know you, anyone whose heart is heavy because they know that without Christ, if you were to tap on their heart right now and say, now is your turn, now is your appointment with mortality. This day, your soul is required of you. And they know that they do not have that relationship with you where they have the peace of knowing that to be absent in this body, their home in the presence of the Lord. We pray for that soul that you speak to that heart, mm -hmm. speak to that mind, mm -hmm. and help them to understand that you still love them too. Mm -hmm. That you died for the sin. You died for our sin. Yes. And you got up. Mm -hmm. And God, you are, are, are looking mm -hmm. for them to just ask you to forgive the so Father right now to that soul that needs your help we ask that you would speak to their heart and every soul that is in need of salvation that can hear our hope which is simply in your own heart wherever you are say Lord Jesus I need you. Come into my life and save me. Forgive me of my sin. Cleanse me. 
and make me one of your children. Save me. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you rose from the dead. I believe that you and your promise of eternal life is as real today as it was when you made it. Father, we thank you. We pray, O oh God, that any and everyone that has prayed that prayer, mm -hmm. Lord, you'll speak to their heart in such a way that they will know. Like the woman at the well, when she left his presence, she knew something was going on on her inside. Why? Because, Lord, she was not deceiving herself mm -hmm. at that particular point. She knew that conviction and conversion was taking place. Yes. And also we saw that a commitment to live mm -hmm. the message was being worked out in her life. Father, we thank you right now. We count on you for Jesus' sake. Our hearts and hands. Amen. Amen. Church, I, I, I pray that you'll continue to follow the narrative. Go back. Dig it out. Look at the details. Look at those different lives. Look at what God was doing in, for, through. Watch this now. And even against them. So you can learn as much by looking at what God did against folks. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yes. I'll leave this illustration for those that know. I'm one of nine boys. I'm up on the top, the upper tier. And one of the things that my younger brothers had an advantage of is watching to see what happened. To us. If they saw us do something and it didn't upset mom and dad, they did it too. If they saw us do something and it was on the wrong side of where we should have been, guess what? They learned how to do it in secret. I didn't say they didn't do it. Y'all hear me? I'm not going to ask if I can get a witness. Somebody might jump up. <coughs> Let Jesus lead you. Let Jesus lead you. Let Jesus lead you. All the way. All the way from earth to heaven. Let Jesus lead you. All the way. Lord, we honor you and we thank you and we thank pray you, that you'll continue thank to strengthen you. and encourage us. Mm -hmm. Sanctify us according to your word. Mm -hmm. You said that we should grow in grace and in your knowledge. Mm -hmm. You say that we ought to be the salt of the earth. You said, O oh God, that if we lift you up, you would draw men unto yourself. So, Father, as you're doing so, we pray, O oh God, that you'll help us to be mindful yeah. that we become more than just hearers, mm -hmm. but also doers of your word. Yeah. So that the blessing you pour upon us can pour through us to a world that is in need. God, we thank you and we count this done. And now to him that is able to keep us from falling, mm -hmm. presenting us fathers before your presence with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power. Both now and ever. Let the church say amen. 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 God bless you. Greet one another in the spirit of love.